When it comes to reviewing teaching and learning practice and seeking ways to improve it, you can find thousands of published papers on the subject by academics and researchers from across the globe. But rarely are the most important stakeholders in the system asked what they think, the students. So we decided to interview 11 third level students on the subject. We asked them to tell us what type of learner they are and how they learn best. Probably by actually doing it or just seeing pictures or just being able to try something out and see if it works or not. I suppose I discovered it in second level but it took a long time of trying to write things out and, and read a lot and then I discovered that I actually, you know, talking and, and you know, actively learning was actually the one that worked best for me. I prefer to have, like, the main, like, key points on the slides and then maybe uh, like say a video or a demonstration but the majority on like slides where you have keynotes what you actually need to listen to what you need to pay attention to it's probably my personal style because I am a reader uh, first and foremost I mean to, to say you're all of one and that's it and that's the only style of learning that you, you can do is you know, it's dismissive of other types of learning and stuff like that so I'd be fairly open minded I mean uh, you know, written stuff as well as listening to stuff, li listening to stuff back, um, I find sometimes helps as well. And normally coming up to exams I'll try and vary it a bit, so I might read out my notes and put them on tape and try and listen to that or I might try and do like spidergrams. You can't really just do hands-on English with a book, you have to apply it in different ways, so I try to combine, I'm very visual as well, so I combine that with kinesthetic abilities that I have to make mind maps a lot more visual and using certain colors for certain parts of the topic and that kind of helps connect the different styles of learning that I have. I'll remember an image on a screen but I won't remember a lecturer talking for five minutes. I'll lose all of the information from that whereas I can visually pull up the image again. From my perspective I've always preferred written but um, I know people who have used to prefer the visual but from a visual impairment perspective visual slides wouldn't be that useful to me. So you're talking more as sort of notes beforehand, or notes after the fact, or tapes. So I think we've established that they all have different styles of learning. But what do they think of the standard lecture format, and how do they prefer to be taught? Um, if it's a lecture just standing talking for a couple of hours, it can be really hard to even let the information sink in, let alone pick up anything from it. If someone's energetic and passionate, that carries me through and I pay attention more and I, you know, more attentive. Whereas if they're just talking about it, but they're just, they're not as enthused, I'm less enthused. There is just the lecture, then the tutorial, and then that's it and you have to do your essay at the very end and it's just kind of this pattern and it's not very engaging and it's really easy to disengage with the learning material as well as just being in college because it's just so repetitive. Sometimes it kind of feels like the lecture is nearly unnecessary because the tutorial kind of covers that side of it but um, yeah I suppose work at home then and, and kind of try and think about it in different ways you know rather than just reading it off slides. Uh, I like when it's kind of mixed a little bit more, um, like we just had one a little while ago where just everybody was just discussing between um, kind of what other people taught rather than just straight out what the tutor or teacher taught. It's a lot easier just to be able to see what everybody else thinks because we're all from different places. Uh, well one of my lecturers she'll always include videos in her slides and different things and always getting the class involved. Instead of just everyone sitting in the dark watching a slideshow, you know, she'll ask questions, ask for people's opinions, and it really makes it more interactive. And it's just, it's a much easier way to learn and it's less formal. So a lot of them don't use email, or Blackboard, or anything like that. And that is a problem, because you need these brilliant researchers because they know a lot of stuff, but they are not able to necessarily translate that knowledge using the new technology we have now. They should be there to find avenues to actually help the student get what they need out of it. If you think they had a lot to say about teaching, wait till you hear their views on assessment. We asked them how they felt about the traditional exam format 
and what types of assessment work for them. I'm not a fan of the exam process. When we almost go back to exams or we have some sort of written exam, we all kind of freak out. I find having a one-off exam to that really gives you the final grade of your module doesn't really show you as a complete student. It only shows you in this little two-hour slot where you've been pressurized and you've narrowed down to these little topics. It doesn't really show you the skills that you've learned throughout the module. I think from an academic point of view, it makes much more sense to write two good essays with the sources and you're getting somewhat of a peer review, rather than how much can you write in the time we've allotted to you in a cold draft gym. Like for me, being dyspraxic, I can't write that fast, let alone think that fast, you know? So I, I, I prefer having continuous assessments in general. So throughout the year we get uh, continuous assessments, so they add up to 60% of the course, so you can pass the course without actually going to the end of your exam, which I love, because it means you don't have to wait for one day whether you pass or fail on one test. I think if students were to be offered an alternative to you know, maybe a choice between two different types of assessment, I think it would work for them on a personal level, like it would suit them better than than being forced into an assessment that they're not comfortable with. Everyone does not learn the same, everyone doesn't come across the same in an, like even in an essay, you know, if you're not particularly good, if you don't have a writing style, it, you're not going to come across the same in an essay as you would in some other form of assessment. The thesis is a huge thing that's kind of looming in my mind because it's such a huge written piece that's coming up and if there was a different way that I could approach it that would be so helpful. I mean I definitely think it's important that for anyone that's doing the course if there is a way that you can better get your points across and it's still you doing the work I don't see why that would be an issue for lectures like. Here's the ideas and here's a cool way we did them in a video you know I, I think that would be even just a much more fun way to approach some of the subject matter you know. Pretty interesting, I think you'll agree. Lastly, we asked them to give one piece of advice to academics to help them improve their teaching and learning practice. Here's what they said. There has to be a bit of engagement on a more personal level, as in, I'm not sure how to accommodate you, tell me what to do. Um, I would just prompt them to make allowances and to really ask students what's going on because a lot of people, even in this college, won't have gone and talked to anyone about having dyslexia or learning problems because they don't know who to go to. Make it more equal so that every student is getting a little bit of what they need to, to do well. I would say lecturers use the online assistance of Blackboard. Put your notes, readings, PDFs on Blackboard. If the lecturer puts up the the lecture slides beforehand and you're able to print them off and you're not concentrating on writing down what's on the PowerPoint presentation so you know you're just able to add in little bits then onto you'd have the slides there in front of you already you just add to them whatever whatever points you think is relevant. I know some of them do and it's just such it's such a relief that you're like oh if I miss that it, it'll be there I can get it when I go home and I don't have to go like asking one of my friends because I wasn't as fast as them taking notes. Maybe to understand that sometimes a group discussion and you know active participation is more memorable to a student and will come into account later whenever they need it. I think that's when they'll look back at a class when they were actively involved and they spoke and they, they heard from other people. That's what's going to come back to them. Uh, definitely add more visual stuff and more practical stuff instead of just talking and giving presentations. Maybe just to incorporate a little bit of creativity even it'll work for some students and it'll maybe get other students to look at things differently and, and open their mind a little bit. So now that we've heard from the students, what do you think? We want to hear your opinion. So join the conversation and tweet us your thoughts to at Ahead Ireland. <laughs>